Hey everybody, welcome to my next uh, free tutorial Friday. Uh, this is a couple weeks now since I put one up, I guess two weeks ago, uh, since I was in China, in Shanghai last week, and I just arrived back middle of this week, so I'm uh, pretty jet lagged at the moment. Um, <clears throat> but I thought, uh, since I don't have anything specific prepared for you this week, I would just jump in and show you what I'm working on currently. And um, this is a piece I'm working on for uh, costume design, uh, and illustration book that Design Studio Press is doing, and I'm contributing a few pages to it. So this is going to be one of my contributions when it's done. Still a work in progress, and I thought I'd show you how I started a piece like this. So that means a uh, piece like this first starts with a photograph, something like that, which is a car wheel and tire, and then I modified it, painted over it a bit, added some graphics, some textures, things like that. Then I jump over to Modo, like this and apply that image as a image map that is set up down here as a texture replicator so on the bottom right of my screen and what I've done is I've set up each frame to have a different <clears throat> set of numbers if you watch the numbers in the lower right corner you'll see the ones with the red dots are going to change those are recorded to a keyframe so here frame 2 I have a different arrangement and if I hover my cursor over that area uh, where I want to see more detail, Photoshop, or sorry, Moto will render that faster. And if I want to see what is the image, we go over here to images and scroll down and double click it. Zoom in. So this is a piece, um, a section of one of my car renderings from Drive, and then I sort of cut and paste it around to sort of fill out this square image, and I added a couple more textures and graphics. So that's the image that's texture bombing that suit currently. So that would be what I would get for frame two, and I go here to frame three. I'll get a different arrangement. Go back to my texture locator, go back to my shader tree, find my color map, and then I can also uh, duplicate it and set it to displacement and bump to give me a little bit more texture and pop out the lighter values. Um, and so that might be an interesting you know, suit concept. And maybe you just like the legs off of one, the torso off of another. You do multiples of these, let them run overnight, come back in the morning and mix and match them together. Um, I might actually render this one overnight because there's some interesting stuff in there. Um, Again, this is the uh, like the happy accident method of getting you started, just looking for interesting graphics once you have a locked silhouette. And if though, for those of you who have been following my um, replicator suit and the moto texture replication stuff I've been doing with the automotive forms, the shoes, and the suits as well, you'll see that this is an asymmetric pose with a symmetrical mapping of the texture bombing. Um, which I would not uh, suggest you try to do uh, unless you're like a moto expert because there was a lot of under the hood um, programming to make that happen. So a friend of mine, Rob Baldwin, was able to make that happen on a asymmetric pose. And I'm not worried about the guy's head, of course, or the hands even. I'll replace all that stuff in Photoshop. So I'm just looking for some interesting graphics for the suit itself. I also have the rendering settings really low here so that it'll, the preview will go a little faster. And um, that's why it's so spotty but hopefully it shows up better in uh, this recording. So the really cool thing, let's say I want to try a different image. I guess I can just keep that going. You just go over here, right click in your image uh, images list, find the image that's currently on there, right click it and go replace as still. And let's try a new image. Let's try, well, let's look at a really simple one. Let's just say I had a simple graphic like that. Okay. And Let's throw it on there, and that's what I get. Let's go back over to the shader, and let's try look at some different frames. So it's using all the same uh, texture replicator settings from my previous image map. And here I'm going to go back. I'm going to see what does it look like on frame two. Well, let's go look at frame zero. All right, and so. There may be some interesting starts in there, some in interesting inspiration. 
And so you can see once you get it all set up, it's incredibly fast to see <clears throat> different images applied. And they don't have to be square swatches, they can actually be anything. Um, because the way Moto does it, it's going to blend the um, a circle basically. It's going to look at the center of the image and then it's going to make the outside of the image blurry so the frame, the hard edge of the frame never shows up um, the way I have it set up. And let's try another one. Here's another car rendering from uh, Drive that I'm using as my source image. And you say, well, I'm, eh, nothing really works there. Let's look at frame four. Uh, maybe not. So that's how that starts. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple that I ran during our last Moto workshop where we explained this in much more detail that Rob Baldwin and I did here at the studio. So let's have a look at some of those. Slide bridge over here. Okay. So here's some that I ran during the day, um, during our workshop. And just various images, almost this concept art or photograph or something. And those are the kind of variations that I was getting throughout the day. And the pose isn't perfect and the, you know, of course, ignore the guys, the character's head, that sort of thing. Um, but these are just tests and um, got some kind of interesting results. And like that's a picture of uh, one of my bicycle helmets. And you can see how it's all blended together. You get a lot of this uh, translucency happening where it blends the fuzzy edges together. And then you'd have to go back into Photoshop and paint over that, um, you know, or unless that, that could be printed, of course, so you could actually get those fuzzy blends. Um, or if you want to make it more solid material, you can go back in and um, just paint over it. So you'll see there's a big jump there from that one. Look at how tight the suit's fitting to his body. And if you look at this one, look how bumped up it is okay, in thickness. And that's because I am using the exact same image as a displacement map. And so you'll see the actual silhouette here. There's really no change to the silhouette. Right, we go here. Now there's a big change to the silhouette because I'm using a, a displacement map probably of about 16 millimeters, I think I set it to. And I think this guy's real world scale, maybe three quarters of an inch. And so same thing with these guys. So more images set to bump and a displacement. Here's a nice example of it. So this is just bump only, no displacement. Um, sorry, it's diffuse color only just to get the texture and the, the pattern. And then I'm going to add bump and displacement, and I get that. So I can say go from that to that, but the exact same diffuse color map for my graphics. And you know, if you want a big insulated suit or something, that's kind of a cool way to go. And it's changing my silhouette, so you can see it's influencing, especially if you look along this arm, right? Much stronger um, wrap of that graphic. So here it's like a printed suit on a smooth wetsuit kind of a thing. And then here it's actually influencing the form with my displacement map. Okay, but the base guide looks like this. And then I'm getting all of that out of just projecting images and playing with materials. Here's that car wheel uh, image that I started with, projected onto the suit. And um, in this case, I'm going to throw a helmet on this guy anyway for this character pages, because I really care about the, the costume design and not who is the character in this case. Um, here's a couple more images, a couple more tests. This one has some nice results up here. Looked like this weird, you know, skeletal printed pattern. Um, this one I kind of like the lower leg, and in fact, I'm going to use part of that I think in my final. And so again, these are examples. And again, that's what the base mesh looks like, which is just your standard figure. And here's the car wheel and some variations down a little bit lower res, so they render a bit faster. And then these are going into the finals. Um, and I'm sort of mixing between this suit and this suit. And if we get this out of the way, pop back over to Photoshop. I'll show you. So there's the wheel. That's the image that I'm projecting. And that's the suit. And so let's see what I've done to it now in Photoshop um, so far. So it's still a work in progress. Um, but you can see if you zoom in here, there's actually interesting textures and details right that I got out of those maps and I'm starting to add more details more stitching uh, took a picture of my own hands for the 
gloves I'll integrate those and put some rings where those wrap I'm starting to get that integrated and I'll probably paint over these as well by the time I'm done but it was a lot faster and a lot more accurate than using the CG model of the hands and I could have you know various poses so let's see what I've got let's see I think that one's trash at this point and everything else let me kill these just so I don't accidentally turn them on and confuse what's there okay it looks like everything else can turn on and I'll, re I'll remember to turn that one off okay so started like this right which was the straight image out of moto that was another suit and here I've kind of blended the two together so I just copied I think yeah the the very base one I copied it up and I'm just using a layer mask so there's the suit and I liked elements of it so I'm just added a layer mask and I'm painting out the parts that I you know want to hide and then for this guy I actually liked his lower no no sorry some of his graphics right through here and that's what I actually took and put over onto this guy and so if I turn that off you'll see I just grabbed part of that suit colorized it to match this uh, family of grays these neutral grays and you can see I've got a bit of those graphics now combining and if I apply my layer mask you see I just soften out and let it blend right where I want it and here I've got some other stuff and here I'm using that orange suit and I'm do, adding that graphic to the lower legs and I liked some of this repeating uh, ridges and stitching through there and I'm gonna eventually right to finish this have to paint over all that and uh, blend it here I've grabbed another part of another suit and used it for the arms and here I'm starting my cleanup layer okay and starting to refine it and let's see here's my replaced hands right from the CG ones to the photographic ones and a little more cleanup a uh, little multiply layer add a little bit more form a little more cleanup now and I, this is what I need to do a, probably a half day of is just going through and painting up and doing the detailed design work and resolving a lot of the design issues that this guy still has. There's a little dark seam between there. Um, I just ran a path for that. So there's my path. And I just uh, stroked that path with a little stitch brush. Uh, something like... I made some stitching brushes, these kind of sorts of things. And I just ran that <laughs> with spacing turned up along the path. And then I applied one of them has effects so a bevel and emboss and then I flatten it down and then there's another one here with a little layer effect and here I just started adding a bit of light back to it so I'm just using that with a color dodge layer like I have in my other tutorials and so I'm going to come back eventually and lay that back in across and pop up some reflective highlights on some of these metallic pieces um, once I'm happy with the design direction and just started playing around here with a couple little wrinkles um, to get a little bit of more flexibility into the suit itself. <clears throat> so that's a work in progress. Um, that's where I'm at currently. Need to wrap it up uh, in the next week. And as soon as I'm over my jet lag, I'm sure it's going to be much easier. So uh, just a quick tutorial today, show you what I'm up to, trying to get back into my workflow, trying to recover from my... Uh, Shanghai trip which was fabulous um, had a great time out there doing some teaching trying to figure out how to get back out there uh, now and do a little more teaching later this summer so uh, anyway hope you have enjoyed this quick peek into what I'm uh, doing today while I'm trying to fight back to my normal uh, work schedule so thanks again for tuning in and uh, tune in next Friday and see what I've got cooking bye bye